we off. And Jared's going to cut the video here. Like that intro. Oh, you know I like it. Cheers. Cheers, Ben. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Hello, how are you? This is the Rugby Roundup, episode 10. We made it. 10 episodes. Really? Shit. Uh, look us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at the Rugby Roundup. We've even got a YouTube channel. Um, if you have time to watch YouTube, you're probably a very important businessman like we were on Friday night. Members, member seats. You're probably in a hurry. You've got things to do. Oh, we understand. You can subscribe to uh, our podcast on the iTunes store as well. Just look up the rugby. Oh, no. Do you have a mini? So, crazy, crazy last week of rugby, Ben. What do you reckon? Upsets. Upsets galore, if you're Australian. Also, if you are a Scottish rugby player, because there's only two in the Lions team. That's all it takes. Yeah, well, they've got Stuart Hogg. Of course, he's the token Scotsman, I feel. He's, he's always there. I think this is like his second or third tour. He's quite young. Um, I personally don't remember Stuart Hogg doing anything of value ever. The only Scottish players I remember from the World Cup who did anything great were Greg Laidlaw. He was awesome. Uh, John Hardy, he was great. What about Gray? Oh yeah, John and Richie Gray, they're That's pretty good. decent, WP Nell. I think they're, they're not on the line. I remember the blindside flank of Strokosh, the guy with the bald head, when they beat Australia in Newcastle. Um, oh, rough. But I don't remember Stuart Hogg doing much. Why is he always there? Huh. So the Lions squad, it was announced on Wednesday. We thought it was going to be last Sunday, um, but it got pushed out of the way for the... Was Sansa complaining? No, that was the week before. Okay. Sansa's always complaining. So the Lions squad. There are a lot of Welsh players. Um, Warren Gatlin being the Welsh coach. He's familiar with them. Um, they didn't perform very well in the Six Nations Wales. Um, in fact, I think they finished fourth below England, Ireland, Scotland finished above Wales. Yet there are 12. Wales has the most players. I think England was next with 11. I could be wrong. Um, but I think they proved themselves when they came to Australia. I know it's only Australia, but they did win 3 0 or they won the series, sorry, 2 1. So when the Lions hit a Welsh core. And, and when you look at the All Blacks, sometimes they just bring back players that are, you know, been there, done that, and they've been successful. So why not? This is true. I mean, Lauren Gatlin is familiar with how they perform. Oh, and, I mean, it's a it's a really good looking squad. Like they've taken the best of the best. I feel they left out um, Chris Robshaw and they left out Dylan Hartley, which I think is a great move. Oh. Dylan Hartley is the king of the grubs. Jared Payne got in the yeah. North Jared Payne from North uh, from Waikato to Northland, Auckland Blues to so, Ireland, playing for Leinster. And then he gets picked for the Lions. That's pretty awesome. And Ben Teo as well. You know, the 2014 NRL Premiership. Do you think um, if Sam Burgess stuck it in, he could be in this Lions team? No, because Sam Burgess wasn't any good at rugby. Okay. And now he's not good at rugby league. And now he's not any good at rugby league either. Oh, the poor fella. He tried the... I'm not as good as him. He, could, he played rugby a lot better than I ever thought. Or even hoped to play. Even on PlayStation, he's probably better at me playing rugby on play. Are there any decent PlayStation rugby games? Yeah, I wait. Rugby, I wait. Like and rugby 06. Oh, you're saying rugby 06, but what? What do you mean, like EA Sports? Yeah, yeah, EA. What about? Did you ever play Joe Nolan rugby on PlayStation One? Uh, I saw. Um, I got kidneys. So we've introduced a new thing on our show today. Um, for those of you who aren't watching on YouTube, uh, we've got a bell. We've got a bullshit bell. Anytime you hear that bell ring, it's probably because one of us thinks the other is talking bullshit. So naturally, I'll be ringing it most of the time. Just push it over there, mate. Yeah, I'll keep it. I'll just keep it here next to my hand. So whenever I feel like uh, you're getting carried away, we'll let him know. We'll let him know. So. 
first game of the round, and what a round it was, what a game it was, Brumbies Hurricanes. I actually the, went the, to Canberra. The, 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 old, the old cliche, game of two halves. It was. There was definitely one game, but it was split into two different halves. That is for sure. I was in Canberra, actually, last week with my brother. Um, not a whole lot to do. Sorry, any Cambodians listening. Cambodians? Cambodians? Cam and, and also any Cambodians that are listening to... Yeah, any Cambodians as well, welcome. But Cambodians? Cambodians? ACTs men and women? But Canberra doesn't have a lot going on unless... I did notice there were a lot of BMWs and they were all in a hurry. And incest. Quite rude, I felt. BMW drivers in Canberra, but you know what? They probably were diplomats or something. Um, a couple of good craft breweries in Canberra, but you only need two days max. So the Brumbies must really love leaving Canberra and just going on tour. So let's talk about real rugby. Real rugby, go Hurricanes. Home. The real deal. Hurricanes are looking the real deal, man. Like, exciting. few things that they need to know, because they need to know. Vince Arso, do not dab. Oh, man, Vince If Arso. I see another dab from you... God damn. Oh, what would I do, really? I'll call him out. Yeah, you... Oh, are you sure you want to call out Vince Arso? Why not? Vince Arso, if you dab one more time, it's going to really upset Ben. It's cool for, like, you know, 14-year-old girls. It is cool for 14 year old girls and maybe 8 year old boys. 2000 years But he ago. doesn't even do like a sh proper, like a hard straight arm dab. He does the limp wristed dab. Mm. At least do a strong, do a powerful, powerful dab. Not a. I'm, yeah, he's a pretty good player though. I mean, anyone would be outside the Barrett Brothers. Oh, he's, he's hugely decent. He is hugely decent. He's 10 tries now this season. But why did he score most of those tries? Barrett. Because of. Odin Barrett, him not, him not having to worry about doing goal kicking, his fucking, Jordy taking over from goal kicks, all Bowden has to focus on is attack, 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 and he's fucking on fire, the Lions must be shitting themselves, Sam Warburton came out and he said he thinks that the Lions' biggest strength on this tour will be their depth against the All Blacks, that's off mate, mate you're dreaming, bitch please. He also, actually, you know what the Lions' biggest strength will be is their goal kicking. Owen Farrell and Lee Halfpenny and Jonathan Sexton, all amazing goal kickers. And that's probably the All Blacks' biggest weakness is kicking penalties and conversions. They can score them, but they just don't add the extras. Uh, so what was the final score in that round, Ben? 56-21. 56-21. And can you, can you just remind us what the score was at halftime? It was... It was 21 to the Brumbies. Yes, they were winning. They were winning. And the Hurricanes at 14. So 14 points to 21. And then the Hurricanes come along and they go, you know what? We're going to win by 30. Yeah, we're going to score another 40 points. How do you like that? So um, we have 42 on us at points. My, God, just moving you on a bit, Jared. Um, my game of the round was the next game. Oh, man, the next game. We... We were lucky enough to get tickets to this game. Um, what a cracking game. Thank Kings you, versus thank you Mr. Us. Wayne Wheatley. The upset of the round. The Actually, I'm going to say it's not an upset. I was sort of reaching the bell a bit there. It wasn't an upset. It, well, no. Well, we both knew it was going to happen. Because you told me the Kings have actually scored no, right up in the top tier of teams that have scored the most tries. Yeah. They just can't defend. The Kings can't defend. And then we put that into the equation. Waratahs can't do either. The Kings, so they can probably win. Kings have scored 27 tries this season. That's two more than the Waratahs have. They're one, they've only scored one less try than the Blues and the Chiefs. So the Kings can attack, that's for sure. And their game against the Force, they, it was all out attack. They did really well, but the Force ran away with it. Then against the Reds as well. The Reds got on top of them. The, the Kings managed to come back. And we were talking about it. We were like, there's no reason why the Kings can't win this because they can attack. The Waratahs have the worst, the, they're the worst tackling team in the Super Rugby. So what happens when you combine, combine a decent attack against shit defending? You get what happened on Friday. You also get $160. 
If you yeah, put a bet on them. Yeah, we put a wee sneaky bet on them. My main. My main. Should we share that? Um, or... We'll, we'll, we'll share what we both want. Okay, so before um, Jared and I went into this game, and his brother, we decided to uh, make a little wager, a little bet. We each we've been known to do. We each predicted what uh, we thought the crowd attendance was going to be. I went with a strong 11,000. Jared went with about a 13,000. 13 and a half. And his brother went for a huge yeah. 19,000. It was about... 10, they usually showed up on the screen the crowd attendance. They decided not to this time because it was that low, that embarrassing, that degrading. So it's fair to say that I won that bet. I think so. But the atmosphere there, man, oh, it was so strange. It was so quiet even from kickoff. It was disappointing. I they was found upset. their voice at 80 minutes. Yeah, when uh, when they were going to lose anyway. Naya Volo, when he scored that bonus point stealing try. Yeah, but the losing bonus point. Pistol. Um, Waratahs, you're going Targaryens. The Targaryens. Believe. Just like the Targaryens of old, your time is over. The season is done for you. And you're the head of your house, the head of house Targaryen, Daryl Targaryen. He's gone. He's got to be done. Throw, pray, him, throw him to the lines. Pray for Gibson. Pray, please, pray for Gibson. He has very low mana. Very low mana at the moment. Although the dressing room says that he doesn't. But, like Bernard Foley says, no, you know, we still back him. Yeah. Mm. No. If you've got to come out in the media and say that, mate, we, know, we see Wagwan. Of course you'd say that. Ah, the next game, Lions versus Haguaris. Haguaris. Lions, 1-24-21. The only Lions I care about at the moment are British and Irish Lions. So you don't want to discuss? I, I would love to move on if you don't mind. Well, I don't mind. So let's go to game four. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We can't just we can't just grease over the. Over. We can't go over the lions and the Hagwadis just like that. Yeah, well, you love the lions. I hate them. No, I like the Hagwadis. Yeah, you love the Hagwadis. Um, another unlucky one there. They're disciplined, living them down again. Another yellow card. They've had a yellow card. They've had ten yellow cards in nine rounds of rugby. The Hagwadis. That's a good record to hold. They're this that it's that Latino fire. It's that if you, passion. If you get points for yellow cards, with their passion, they're winning. Huh? If you get points for getting yellow cards, if you get cards, points for yellow cards, you're winning. Yeah, because they've got the most. But that's not the way it works. Um. Oh, so the Lions. Oh no, the yeah, the Lions managed to score the match-winning try. How much grease are you putting into this? Just there at the end. Um, okay. So the Hagwad is unlucky to go down. Uh, okay, Ben, we'll move on. I can sense. Yes. I can sense you don't want to bar of that. It was an early morning game too, so if you got up to watch that. The next game, Highlanders defeating the Moondogs. Oh, that's right. Marty Banks missed his first kick of the season. Bugger. Party at Marty's over. For now. For now. He, how, um, how far I think up? it was 26 in a row. He got 26 29? kicks at goal in a row. Or 29, I think. Either of those sounds really nice. Oh, he's a legend. He is. I generally would actually have him in and around the All Blacks during the Lions squad. I know he should rip his contract up. No, uh, I, yeah, I, because they always I think do that for players who sign that I they're know. leaving. They always kind of just shun them. Sapuanga will be back. Shout out to Sapuanga if you're listening again. Yeah, yeah Sapuanga. Um, so the thing with Marty Banks, I can, I feel like he could potentially, with a bit of sprinkle, a little bit of magic on him. He could be like another Bodie or Nick Cody Barrett. No, because no. his, his utility. He doesn't have the running game. Well, it hasn't been exposed yet. But he no. But we we know that he's got great kicks. Great, he's a good kicking first five. He's he can run. He he's a good legs. general. And he sh I I haven't seen, uh, he, I don't know. I'd need to see. I'm gonna study his next game closely. I'm gonna study it closely. Um, there was a bit of a reunion in that game. Um, Fumi Tanaka. Came oh, down. Yeah, I think that he played his 50th. 50th Super Rugby uh, match against the Highlanders. And he had a reunion with Joe Wheeler. Yeah, Joe Wheeler loves him, doesn't he? Yeah, they they, they did their little thing. Uh, I do have a soft spot for the Moon Dogs as well. I love the underdog, really. I always go for the team that I think shouldn't win. No, you don't. Well, no, you're right. I do support the Chiefs. But... Oh, oh shit. 
Oh, the first first time and it was yes. Ben. Fuck. How embarrassing. Um, <clears throat> oh, you're right. No, I only support winning teams. No, I was about to support Ben Plenty then. Um, I feel like the Moondongs have had a pretty rough time in New Zealand. They're off to Hamilton or something. That's played yeah. for Chiefs money. It's, it's a rough road trip. This it one. is. But they're going to develop. It's about developing character. Because then, when next year, when they're in the Australian Conference, they'll be able to tear it up. Okay. Unless the Australian Conference has one team cut and all the other teams are stronger because they get to scavenge all the good players from the team that gets cut. You know what's going to happen in like five years from now if the competition hasn't changed? That whole Australian Conference will just be Japanese players. I think that was pretty uncalled for, mate. Oh, I call bullshit. It's going to be Polynesian players. Uh, unless they get a Polynesian super rugby team. But that's, they, that's they, neither they, here nor there. I see. Oh, yeah, okay. Next game of the round. The game of the round. Right. Was the Crusaders and the Stormers. Oh. So we were at Stat Chance. Happy birthday, Stat Chance. Yeah, happy, happy birthday, birthday. birthday. Um, And look... When I'm at a party, I like to be social. I like to let people know that I'm there. And yeah. people like to know that you're there. And there was the Crusaders on, and I just had to switch into Crusaders mode. What? Anti-social, Ben. What, what is it that you always say that a good party needs? Yeah. Atmosphere and arse. Atmosphere and arse, and there was both of those are plenty at Brian's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um... It was your ass, wasn't it? You yeah. kept getting it out and playing beer pop. I did. Um, and Mitchell I Hetherington. I got my G-string on backwards too because I got changed in the dark. <laughs> I hate that. Oh! 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 oh speaking of the G-string on backwards, did you see the fucking lion's yeah, pop? Yeah. That did. picture? Oh, dude. Oh, how embarrassing. But so, at least you don't know which one it was, unless you can figure out that it was the tight head prop for the lions at that time. Yeah, of course you can figure out who it is. Line them up. But um, I thought I saw that on Shock Burgers. So he trip. had he had his penis falling out of his pants. He had his penis. I wouldn't say falling. It was more just poking, peeking out of his shorts. Maybe he was going for a strategical like pull it out, and it could like maybe it's smelly. I would like to know if they won that scrum. Maybe his opposing prop saw it and was just like, what? Maybe it was mind games. Yeah. Maybe Eddie Jones did that for England. Because he was at, at, at the Stormers, he was going to coach the Stormers before oh, he left. Oh, really? Maybe he just goes around spreading the word. That's a little nut slip. The bat wing, they call it. I, I, I couldn't honestly say. But we're, we're getting sidetracked. Crusaders, 57 points to 24. Um, still unbeaten. Uh, George Bridges looking like an absolute superstar. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve Hansen. There you go. Uh, and calm down, calm down. I think he's fucking. A, he's one for the future. George Brett, yeah, for sure. As long as Navarro's not running at him. You remember that? What's that? You remember when Navarro bumped the shit out of him? In the run of the season? Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, but also, we, we were very sad to see that Fetu Douglas has gone. Fetu! Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, shout out to Ryan Hart and um, Calvin. Yeah, well, I'm pointing out the fact that um, he's gone. He's key. I didn't realize that Fetu Douglas only had a short term contract to cover Kieran Reid. Although, Kieran Reid, what better way to come back to the Crusaders than to score a double in the first half? Absolutely. Pretty decent. So, Crusaders are still unbeaten. Still unbeaten. It's amazing. Um, and the Stormers have now lost two in a row. And the Stormers are continuing on their New Zealand trip. It's easy, you could see them losing the next one as well. And, um, but do you notice like Fetu Douglas is honoring his contract in Italy, sticking to it, where if it was someone like Sonny Bill, he could just rip it out. Yeah, and, and apparently it's all right for him to do that's, that. That's the same as Stephen Luatua. Um, Stephen Luatua, he signed on with um, Bristol City in the English Premiership. Yeah. And they just got relegated to the second division. So they're going down to the English Championship for rugby. And Lua Tua is saying he's still going to honour that contract. Also because he's getting paid a shitload from them. But he's, another, he's, a, he's a good man. Bad man team. 
The game after the Crusaders Stormers, it was. It was to oh, be wait, honest, before, it was we, before we go on, Matt Todd played his hundred. Oh yeah, Matty Todd. Matty Todd. He's like a he real work. workhorse. Workhorse. Yeah. Did that hundred kind of just sneak up on you? Oh, I did it once. Yeah. But congratulations, Matty. Um, for, also, a long, for a long time, it looked like he was going to be a wasted talent. Oh my god, he's so good. Um, look, Kelly actually had that same line, and you called him out again, didn't you? Oh yeah, Kelly was more pet food because um, last week, last week when he called me out, he didn't have any yeah. response when I when I won. So he he manned up and he said, you know what, I'll do it this week. Yeah. Uh, it turns out, like me. I backed the Crusaders, he did too, and he didn't have to do it. So, seems we're like even. Seems a bit. Fair. Dust yeah. the hands off. Thanks, Kelly, for On that. to the next one. Um, the next one was the Force Chiefs in Perth. Um, you, did you notice I had, I, I was, can I go back? Because I like Crusaders. They're on a South African tour now. Mm -hmm. So this will really test them away from home. Yeah, it will. Deep into the South African. Although South Africa ain't what it used to be. <sighs> You're right. Um, in Perth. Can I just go back? It was a very... Very good crowd, although I suspect that's because most of the New Zealanders. That was not a great crowd. That was uncalled for. No, it wasn't. That's only to be used for calls of bullshit. And if you read the reports on that game, it was a very good crowd. And what's good? The crowd, the atmosphere, the numbers. For a for a forced game, it was it was okay. actually the highest attended Super Rugby match in Australia this year. So um, it's it was a good crowd. Yeah, so but, do you know why it was a good crowd? Because yeah, half of them were Kiwis. Oh, and they're all there to support the Chiefs. Oh, yeah. You, you could hear them when they when the Chiefs scored their try. Aaron oh. Cruden sliced them up the fucking middle. Yeah, don't, it was a yeah, sick try. Don't, nothing too like fancy, mate. Like, it wasn't a convincing win. Um, it wasn't convincing, no. But it was good to know that the Chiefs can be stra straggled down and still grind out a win. Yeah, um... So the Force ended up losing. Chiefs are uh, getting up at 16 points to 7. Hayla Petty's injured. Hayla Petty, they don't know how long he's out for. Um, I just, yeah. It, the, the Force turned up. They found out that they were on the chopping block, them and the Rebels. Um, and the response from both of those teams, Rebels won last week, the Rebels drew this week. Um, the Force had a bye last week, but they put in a competitive... You know what? The, the Force and the Rebels have looked better than the Brumbies, Reds, and Warriors. Uh, I've got a question. Um, there was a. Did Tawhiri Kerbalo play? Oh, yeah, he did. Okay. Who's no? He didn't, did he? Oh yeah. This is okay. Who's that? Um, who's the replacement halfback? The one who got suspended for Oh, four yeah, because of a knee or something. Head stomping, yeah. That's right, that's right. So he's like a little ginger kid. He is. Oh, yeah, he actually is. Is he Sturzak's cousin or brother? Possibly. Or I think so. That's one thing. <laughs> <Mom. laughs> um, I would give him a ginger kiss, then bust a ginger nut, have a ginger beer with him, and yeah, that's the end of my story. But yeah, would you do it gingerly? Yes. So you gingerly give him a ginger kiss, bust a ginger so nut, have a ginger beer. He's quite violent, isn't he? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that was. I, I haven't seen him play a lot. Well, that's the te that's the fiery red temp temper, isn't it? Yeah. Personally, to me, he doesn't seem like he fits in. Like, well, would he really talk to Liam Meeson either? Um, do you know that's that's a problem with speaking the of fiery reds, though? Fiery reds. Uh, Sturzaka got sent off for two yellow cards. He did too. Deliberate knockdowns. Um, that's a real problem for me for the Rebels. You can't have that guy as a captain. No one likes him. Also, another problem for the Rebels is that. Up until three weeks ago, they were the best disciplined team in the Super Rugby. They'd only had one yellow card, and now they've got seven in three games. Mm -hmm. Two yellow cards in the last three games each. So, uh, they're unraveling. And, like Ben pointed out in our very first episode, they still haven't won a game. Oh, no, they beat the Brumbies. Sorry, guys. I have now forfeited the right to have any comment on the Rebels game. But take it away, please, Ben. Next game of the round was the Bulls Cheetahs. Blue Balls against the. Do we have a name for the Cheetahs? No, we don't. They're just from Blancfontein, which is fun to say. Um, 20 points to 14, and that's all we need to say, really, isn't it? 
Uh, I've got something to say. Um, their coach, the Cheetahs coach, his name is Francis Smith, or Franco Smith. Mm -hmm. He says that with all the Sanzar talk saying that they're going to get cut, he said as an excuse that it is now distracting them. Oh, so that's why they lost. So but he said that's why he brings up after every loss. So where is the but the very the very interesting thing about that is the teams that have been you know on the with the head on the axe they are actually now playing better. Yeah. I.e. the Kings, the Force, and Rebels are now better than the Waratahs. Waratahs. If they said the Waratahs are ready to get cut, back up the top of the ladder. Imagine if they said they were going to do it on position on the ladder at the end of the season. They should. They should have. Um, yeah. So well, that's interesting. That he's using it to hide his faults, and yeah. the Force and the Rebels are using it to spur them on. Last game of the round, Sharks, Rebels. <sighs> Nine all draw. Boring. Oh, I think the know. Sharks got a, a red card in the 17th minute. Yeah, yeah. They, the Sharks Sorry. had a red card. Uh, that's what made it so even. The, 14 versus 15. Yeah, 14 versus 15, and the Rebels still couldn't. Score a try, a little ginger nut. Jesus, man. Um, you know Morgan Turinui or Turinui, mm -hmm. one of the ones that they call it Morgan Turinari. Yeah. Yeah, he's like their backs coach. Is he? That's probably why they're so shit. <laughs> you're not a fan at all. Never. Never have been. Never will be. I th you're a long time King fan now, though, eh? Love my Kings. Are you gonna uh, wear a golden crown? Their, their jerseys are real shit. Yeah, the Kings have got the most They remind jerseys. me of the 2007 Rugby World Cup. They remind me of the Crusaders away strip from a couple years ago. They remember when I fell off the balcony. Boring grey. Just mm. boring. Boring Kings. Fifty shades of grey. For the kind of rugby they're playing on attack, it doesn't... No, it's, it's just one shade of grey. It's just shit. Oh, you've got your colour It's like Eeyore. You know that depressed donkey from Winnie the Pooh? Yeah. That's what their jerseys look like. Apparently, from what I hear, he's not related to Donkey from Shrek. Oh, really? I always thought. Yeah, the family resemblance. I thought I could see a resemblance there. That's interesting. Shall we? Um, should we go on to the next round? Or is, is there a, is there an issue there, then that you have? There's a few issues. Go um, on. Get one, I think Ivan Cleary. Oh, oh. He should coach the Warriors. Um, oh, then, wait a minute. Oh, I want to talk more about this. Because the Waratahs need to get rid of Daryl Gibson. They do. Oh, you do want to talk about this, don't you? No, because it's rugby. This is rugby union. No, because you know you were telling me about that dude, the old coach that had a blowout on the media, saying that uh, that was the worst loss I've ever seen. Oh yeah, so Bob Dwyer, Bob Dwyer, who coached the Waratahs in two thousand two, two thousand six, something. It was it was at the turn of the millennium. Uh, he came out in the media saying that the, the uh, Waratahs loss to the Kings on Friday night was the worst game in Waratahs history. Convenient. Because he was in charge when they lost to the Crusaders 96 points to 19. Well, I, think that, I don't think they scored 19. Maybe it was 12. Well, it's probably lower than that. So, I just think it's a bit rich to have the guy whose team suffered the largest loss in Super Rugby history, to come on and say, you know what, no, no, this is the this is the worst game now. You know what, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, it was shit, it was terrible. It's the second worst game in Waratah's history, but Maybe come on, Bobby. I reckon old, Bob, old Bobby Nutsack should um, probably go back to coach. I mean, he'll be a, he'll be a job yeah, maybe he should take over. If he thinks it's that bad. Because someone's got it. Where's who from... From now for Daryl, if he gets the cut, we yeah, he'll probably possibly. go to Europe. He'll go coach in Japan or in Italy or something. Like um, like what's his name? Who coached the All Blacks back then too? John John Hart. Yeah. He went for, he went to Italy and then the Lions and just and now he's John Hart's actually coaching USA rugby. Shout out to USA rugby as well. Um, I, I I like the USA rugby team. Um, New Zealand women's one. Yeah, and um, Katsuyoshi. Yeah, they won in Japan. Uh, they beat Fiji in the final. The Canadian Canadian women's sevens team is fucking good as well. Um, so is the American women's sevens. So sevens is coming alive in North America at the moment, which is great. It'd be cool to see fifteens do the same. Oh, 
Also, this year, um, America has got a major league rugby tournament starting, like professional or semi-professional rugby. Wicked. Yeah, so uh, we're going to talk a bit about that when it does start too, because I feel like I feel like uh, we we should probably cover some of those games going on that you don't hear about on all your other rugby sources. Speaking of sources, which source do you like the most? Oh, probably Waddies. Waddies? What you know? No, about? Heinz, man. No, but speaking of Wally Hines, no, um, I just read something interesting. We're about halfway through the season, and Australia is on track to have the worst recorded season in history. Oh, for them. now see this. This relates quite nicely to our for and against article. The old segue. So if you went on. Um, the Union Live app. If you're listening right now on Union Live, yeah, hello. thanks for the new listeners. What impeccable taste do you have, man or woman, listening right now? Anywhere in the world. Why did you have to bring up man or woman? Because it could be a man or it could be a boy or a girl. What if they're in between, like becoming a transvestite, which we call transforming? Um, then welcome. Yeah. Because they cha- some people change. The only people I don't like are people who don't like rugby. So if you're listening, then you're safe. Unless you're listening out of spite. Oh, someone could be torturing someone with, like, by listening to them. Uh, like, yeah, like them in a dungeon. Like how they tortured people by playing Metallica in Afghanistan. Do they? Yeah. Well, they did. Why? They played Into Sandman by Metallica to torture the Iraqi prisoners of war. Why On repeat. They, why did they not like it? I don't know. Bad taste in music? No, I think good anyway, taste. Um, we're getting sidetracked. If you are listening on the Union Live app, or if you're not, doesn't matter. The fact that you're listening is awesome to us. But we wrote an article on the Union Live app. Um, it was called For and Against. And the statement was, 2018 will be a better year for Super Rugby. I reckon, yes, it will be. Then he thought, no, it's not going to be. Absolutely not. Um, at the time of recording right now, on a Monday night, um, we had 54% of people agreeing with me, saying that, yes, it will be better. Yeah. So 46 going with Ben, but that's not enough of a difference to say definitely yes or no. I mean, even the one from the week before, it was 60-40. So those hot button issues. One's still bigger than the other. Yeah, so I am currently in the lead. You won the last one though, so it does feel good. Uh, That's kind of But you're right. It depends. When we say 2018 will be better for Super Rugby, it depends which teams you support then, doesn't it? That's a good point. If you're a Force or a Rebels fan, or depending on if you get cut, no, it's not going to be better because I don't have a team. If you're a Kiwi fan, well, yeah, it's always good. If you're a South African fan or an Australian fan, you've got to be optimistic. These people who are voting no, no, fuck. If, they're, if, they're if you're voting no, you're smart. If you're voting no, then you don't, you're not interested in rugby next year. Come on, they've already, no. They've already decided they don't want to watch the rugby next year. Yeah, but I don't blame them, Jared. I do. Well, look at the conf- look at the system how it works. Someone from each conference has to be in the top four, or next year top three. That doesn't make sense. We don't know what the format's going to look like. It's this not year. on its way to being completely perfect. Whereas, and we're always chasing perfection. I know, but it could be much better. But it's a start. They need. A, there's, there's not enough competitive teams. There's not enough competitive teams, sir. It'll be a better. It will be better. There's no way it can be worse. Yeah, it can. How is it going to be worse? Frustration builds. Things build, blow up. We, like imagine giving um, baking soda to a seagull. Eventually, it's going to blow up. <laughs> yeah. Look, the only way I can see it getting worse is if the legal. Oh, action, if, if this is still going, this podcast. Yeah, if our podcast is on to episode 100, that's going to be fucking bad. But if the legal action from the Rebels and Force actually continues into next year and strangles the Australian rugby to a standstill, that'll be fucking bad. But to those people who aren't going to be watching Super Rugby next year, fair weather rugby fans, you can get fucked. No. Jared. If you're not going to know, no. No, Sands, I need to fix it to keep them. It's not their fault that they're leaving. It's not our fault. Bacon soda to a snail. See what happens. It's not my fault. They support a shit team. 
I think I'm I support teams point. that don't win. Jared. But I don't stop watching just because it's... they're not winning. I'm not a fair weather fickle fan. I do it because I love the team I support and because I love the game that I'm watching. Is a slug a snailless shale? Snail shale. Uh, a shellless no, snail. No. A slug is its own independent being from a snail. So you're saying it's from a snail? I'm saying that they are uh, related. Yeah, but is a slug if you, you took, see... If you took a shell off a snail... Yeah, is it, it a would, slug? No. What does it look like? It would look completely different. Its yeah. body goes in to the shell and becomes yeah, part of once it. The, once the slug's out... If you shell, rip the shell off of a, off a snail, it would die because it would bleed because you're hemorrhaging part of it off. It'd be like, oh, if, if I rip the top of your skull off your head... Are you still a human? Yes, I'm still a fucking human. So it's still a snail? No, it's a slug. Oh, you, you just talked yourself into this. That was pretty good, actually. Killed it. Yep. Killed it. But I'm still a slug. <laughs> you can be whatever you want to be. Thank you. We, we welcome all kinds of transitioning people here. Transforming. Transforming. Into a slug. Yeah. You want to swap drinks? No. Okay. Why do you have? I've got nothing. Do you have another beer? I don't know, you've got another. You're, you're all out. I'm all out. We're dry, yeah. people. We're dry. Is it go go get a, go get us just for a wine? Yeah, well, Sweet. Um, speaking of uh, wines, there's a lot of people whining at the moment. Do you know why? Why? Because it's Anzac Day. I wouldn't say they were whining, but... I think that was just a really bad segue. <laughs> Put your hand up. Yeah. Anzac Day. Lest we forget. Uh, um, I've got a message for Sansa. Uh, not that you're ever going to listen. But here's an idea for you. Please consider it. All five New Zealand teams should verse all five or four next year. New Zealand teams and have a really big ceremony. Have Australian a, teams. Australian verse New Zealand. Like a weekend, Anzac like weekend. A full blown Anzac weekend. Mm. Just all more. Yeah, nice, I like it. Um, so, Anzac Day in Australia is quite a celebration, whereas in New Zealand it's quite a uh, somber occasion. It's always a bit strange. Will you be going to a dawn ceremony tomorrow? Um, I'm undecided on that. I'll be, I'll be heading down to the Canterbury RSL, um, oh, paying respects. Yeah. They wear rosemary here. Didn't I? Didn't know that. Oh, was that just a one-off? Is that a for real? I think they wear a ro uh, rosemary on Anzac Day here, and in New Zealand we wear poppies. S not small things. Small things. Yes. Okay. Do you want to get onto the next round, Ben, or do you want to go get your wine? Uh, I just want to mention something. Okay. Um, if these numbers are wrong, blame the calculator. Um, I added up <clears throat> all the team scores from the New Zealand teams. This round, round nine. Mm -hmm. So there was four New Zealand teams that played. I think the Blues had a bye. I added up all the scores that New Zealand teams scored for, and it was like 169 points. 169 all up. Four teams. Mm -hmm. In Australia, they had four teams that played this week. I added all their scores up, 61. That's a difference of 108 points. That's a lot of points. It is a lot. And then I decided to add up all the South African teams including the Hagwaris and Moondogs. That in total equals eight teams, and all their four points equals 153. So that's still 16 more points than the old New Zealand teams, and that's twice the amount of teams. So when you think about attack, entertainment... You can see why the New Zealand teams and, get constant support. And, and but it's a cycle. While they're winning. It's a cycle. It feeds into itself. The more your team wins, the more people want to watch. The more people want to play. The more people will come and watch the game, pay money. The more you can invest, the more people, will, the better the quality of rugby will get. So, yeah, I. That's man. I feel like we're going on a bit too much about how bad rugby is getting in Australia. Speak for yourself. No, but it's true. It's true. It's um. It's getting really frustrating because the negativity surrounding Super Rugby, like, yeah, you know what, me and Ben, we did our for and against. It was a bit of a joke. Um, as you can tell, our podcast is a bit of a joke. With, but we, um, we're doing it 
because we are genuinely concerned. Because we can see we can see it happening in Australia that it is something needs to be done and, and we can joke about it all, all we want. We can What have you been talking about since I've been gone? I'm talking about how it's getting it's a concern about rugby in Australia. Okay, let's go to the next round. It's um it's that much we can see that it's we can see the signs. The signs are on the wall. It's 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 I'm concerned. Speaking of signs on walls. It needs to change. We need to change it. And it won't be helped by Australian rugby supporters turning their backs. It won't be helped by Australian rugby media ripping them to shreds and taking joy. It seems like they take joy in ripping them to shreds. It, it's not helped either by us um, um, taking the piss out of them all the time, but it's just too fucking fun. And um, it's part of who we are, so. I like our hats today, Jared. If you're not watching on YouTube, they're all green. Yeah. Um, do you know what else is all green? The Celtics. Celtics. The NBA finals at the moment are on. Oh, yeah. Beware of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Isaiah Thomas was on fire. 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 From Boston. Okay, it's, it's all about Chicago Bulls, all the way, it's all Cleveland. All See way. Russell Westbrook blow up? Yeah, I saw Because they asked him about why his team can't yeah. win without him. But why is he wearing what he's wearing? He's very fashionable, but I don't know if that's mate, what you're wearing. Mate, he's straight playing, mate. He's straight playing, And also, um, Joseph Parker's fight's been taken, cancelled. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's bullshit. Alright, I think we've fucking rambled long enough. Let's get on to the next round. We'll give you a, a little sneaky peek. Just a little peek at round 10 um, and because we did so well in the last round with our bets you probably should listen first game of the round at Forsyth Bar Stadium in Dunedin the party at Marty's Highlanders uh, well, will Marty back start at 10 or will Sup Wonga come back is he, is he due back this week I'm not sure that's the trouble with recording on a Monday we don't have the team lists uh, I, I think just... Marty Banks has earned the right to stay there They've been doing pretty that's, well. That's, I've got the same, I would say the same question about Richie Mola versus Mitchell Clutch, you know? Yeah, Clutch. Yeah. Even with Fetu, eh? Yeah. Fetu Douglas could have easily played that game against the Stormers and probably could have got two tries as well. Uh, anyway, Highlanders are playing the Stormers. It's the Stormers' second game in New Zealand. And they, they really need to win it. The Storm is um, uh, look, staring down the barrel of their third defeat in a row. So they'll be fired up. Uh, the Highlanders, their form's been patchy, but they have shown flashes of brilliance. Uh, Malachi Fikitoa is scoring some really good tries for them. And their forwards are putting in the hard yards as well. Uh, I, I don't usually go against New Zealand teams, unless it's the Crusaders. But I could see the Stormers winning here because they'll, they'll need to, the Stormers need to win here. They'll know that they've got a quality team. Dylan, Dylan Leeds, um, Khaleesi, um, Itzabeth as well. They've got a really good squad. The Highlanders, I think most of their injured players are coming or are almost, on, almost back. Um, but I, I see the Storm as beating the Highlanders. <gasps> How dare you say that? My South Island brothers, do not worry. Do not fear. The South Africans are not to fear. The Stormers will beat them by seven. No. What do you reckon? I reckon Highlanders by 14. All right, and that's the only game that Friday night. Uh, the next game, the first one of Saturday, is the Chiefs playing the Moondogs. That'll be a bit of fun. Uh, Chiefs by 30. Moondogs? Oh. Chiefs by 28. Right, because this, this, this game is... The Moondogs are similar to the Kings in that they've got great attack but no defence. The Chiefs are completely different to the Waratahs because they have got defence. So those Moondogs, when their attack gets snuffled out and they can't do anything, the Chiefs will strangle them, and they're going to put yeah they're going to put points on them. So um, it's 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 games like this that I, I'm pretty happy. I'm a Chiefs fan. 
Next game of the round. Oh! The next game of the round. This game is important. Wow. Reds playing the Waratahs. This is a huge game. I don't feel it's that important. It is for their, their respective seasons. Yeah, but no, they're both out. Neither of them can make finals, and neither of them are getting cut, so their season is a dead rubber. But it's almost like a state of origin, right? And they're talking about hyping it up like it. Carmichael Hunt, your favourite player. Carmichael Cunt, he's... Um, and Brad Thorne. They're all part of the Red setup, and they're both Queensland origin representatives. And I was reading today that uh, they've been getting in all their you, boys' You're ears. talking about a bit, bit of that league, mate. What doing with that? Yuck. No, I would, I would never do such a thing. And because they've played okay. in that code, they've been telling all the Queensland boys about how, how much they hate the New South Wales players. So expect the Reds to be fired up. Don't expect them to be good, but expect them to be fired up. <laughs> um, the Waratahs, I see them with their tails between their legs. They don't know which way is up at the moment. Yeah, because they're bitches. Little bitch, no. Sit down. Be humble. Smile. Mate, you know what I mean, mate? Yeah, yeah. That's just how I feel. I feel that's just like that's you. That's just how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I, all I can just hear is dead rubber. Dead rubber. Dead. Mm, and the word dead is getting louder and louder. Like a ringing bell? Yeah. Um, do you know what happens after you're born? Um, I know what happens eventually. You die. Once you're born, all your whole life is, is just you slowly dying. <laughs> yeah, true. Sad reality. Similar, Which is why it's so important. Similar to the Waratahs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, just a slow death. It's just, oh man, I, ho I hope not. I hope not. For the sake of rugby in this fine rugby nation. Ooh. Well, we need Australia to be good. <laughs> we need Australia to be good. Who's our nearest competitor? England, but how um, often do the, we play them? The North Island? The North Island? That's another country. Nah. Keep it. Just Keep it down, that's Samoa. I know. Oh, that's I'm Auckland. At, yeah, Auckland only talk. Is there more Samoans in Auckland? Yes, there are more Fiji. There are more, Poly there are more Polynesians in Auckland than in... Oh, Bola. Bola. Auckland um, is the largest Polynesian city in the world. Depending. So after the Reds and the Waratahs finish bitch slapping each other, I, I don't see it being a high scoring game either. The score will be, I'm going to go exact points, 23 points to the Waratahs and 26 points to the Reds. And they're all going to be intercepts. <laughs> they're all going to be intercept tries. <laughs> and there'll be two red cards. And Carmichael Hunt, Carmichael Cunt will be one of them. Um, the next game of the round. Over in Perth, so the Force get two home games in a row, will be the Force playing the Lions. That's only going to go one way. Lions are too good. The Force... Can I just say, like, NIB Stadium, like, as shit as the Nib? Force are. Isn't it pronounced Nib? Oh, Nob Stadium. Rub them on the nibs. Nob Stadium's like... Do you like your nibs getting rubbed? It's a bit of, like, a fortress. It really catches people, especially New Zealand teams going to South Africa, and on the way back, it really catches them. It's a difficult place to win, Jared. What? At Nib Stadium? No. Are you, what are you trying to say, Ben? The Western Force ha actually... Okay, for them it's quite hard because they're positioned in, in the wrong side of the country. It's hard for them to come over here to New Zealand and play. But when New Zealand teams go to South Africa and come back, it's just a... You know I say? A kind of a place to play. What are, you, what are you trying to say about the results of this game? No, I'm just saying that they're very well positioned um, geographically. Oh, I'm They're a halfway that, house. I'm going to say that the Force are going to win. Oh! No way! The, the Lions are going to win by 20. The word galvanised comes to mind. Hey, Lepetti, yeah, let's stand up. Um, Hodgson will be there. He's a, Hodgson's probably out. Stand up. So you, you see the Force being resilient. Playing with heart. Half of me. With heart. That's how, much, that's how much I hate the lines. Steel in your blood. Yeah. If you had steel in your blood, you'd die. You'd be... Or you'd be Wolverine. You'd be Wolverine. Um, holy shit. Well, how much are the Force going to win by a bit? Eight. Oh, okay. Well, I would love... 
I would love to watch this game with you. Oh, I'm busy. When is it? That's on, that's on that's Saturday night. I said, I said to my mum, I went back to New Zealand. I bring my mum up. And go, oh mum, can you please pick me up from the airport? She goes, oh, I'm busy. I said, I never told you what it was. <laughs> <laughs> pick me up. <laughs> um, the next game of the round, oh, it's one of those shitty one o'clock games. Oh. Cheetahs playing Crusaders. Cheetahs losing to the Crusaders. Yeah, the Cheetahs definitely losing to the Crusaders. Crusaders got on that plane like there was just straight from field to plane. Heel to plane, plane to business class, business class to first class to sleep to no mother fucking jet lag because they sleep all night long in there, hard in South Africa, coming in hard, coming in the win, letting them know they're there, Bloemfontein. Bloemfontein, yep. Bloemfontein will not contain the Crusaders. Ooh. See what I did there? Shanda, nice. Crusaders are going to win by 25. Undefeated still, and, and, Mitchell Hunt will start. Look, I trust Razor Robinson. So do I. And another person I trust is Steve Hansen. Immensely. What does annoy me is when Steve Hansen picks a team or picks, picks like, when he picks a squad for like the Lions tour, people are going to be on social media, this person should be here, that person should be here. If you have a record like Steve Henson has, two losses, you cannot motherfucking go onto the internet, type in your little opinion about who should be in and who shouldn't be in. That motherfucker knows what he's doing. You know what you can do on social media? You, what you can do on social media is, is look us up at the Rugby Roundup and troll us. Try and try and see if you can. Um, we want some. We want some comments on That's our Facebook. Smart. Any Facebook post that you find from us, just have a go. Rip into us. Uh, any Twitter at the Rugby Roundup. Just come on. Let us have it. On our Instagram. Just 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 really disgustingly mean comments. We'll read them out. The best one. We'll we'll give it a read out. Nice. Um, we got called out once on. Um, yeah, we did get called out. Um, SoundCloud? Yeah, I think it was SoundCloud. I don't remember what the exact comment was. It, yeah. it was, it was alright, but, but you guys can do better. Come on. Come on. You can do better, little bitches. Little bitches. Um, Next game of the round, at 3.30 in the morning, the Kings playing the Rebels. Shit. Well, well let's just naturally go for the Kings. Yeah, the Kings are going to win two in a row. Probably their longest winning streak ever. A little ginger. Or are the, the Rebels going to be like the Force, galvanised. Steel in the blood. Will they take heart from their nine all draw? I don't actually know. Have you seen that? Because um, I, I see the Kings, they've reached their peak. The Kings have accomplished, that was their final. The Kings won their final and now they're just, they, they don't have, they haven't got the, got to get your head in the game. You know? Um, was that a freestyle? No, it was a high school musical. Or have you seen that? Uh, have you seen Frozen? I haven't seen Frozen. Oh, really? No. Neither. I saw Moana. It was a fucking good movie. Yeah. Um, Made me really emotional about being from New Zealand. Oh, okay. I thought you were from, like, England. No. But your last name? My last name. Let's not say what my last name is. Ranana. Yeah, Ranana. This is true. Kings Rebels, I could see the Rebels winning. Um, Don't do it. It's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Rebels by 10. Kings by 10. Reese Hodge to score all their points. A South African dude that I don't know to <laughs> score all their points. Alright, next game of the round. Um, in the morning, early morning. It's the. With a J, with a J, with a J, never fucking get confused, okay? Playing the Sharks in Argentina, um, and the Jaguars play really well there, so I see them, they're going to win by 12. Sharks by 12. Motherfucker, I'm coming at you. Augustine Creeby to score the match winning try. Augustine Creeby to suck these nuts. Yeah, I'll leave another man on them. 
and respect you for that. Yeah. What could be more manly than that? Having a man. Mm. 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 Respect, pa. The last game is another Sunday. I'm really loving these Sunday afternoon games. It's what in should, Canberra. What should go to that game? It's, oh, should we do a road trip? Roadie? To Canberra to watch the Blues play the Brumbies. It's been a year since we've we'll just been drive there. down oh, no, on just Sunday. There, eh? Yeah. And, and trust me, all you want to do me. is drive and leave. Oi, the you, night life <laughs> there is fucking awful. awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a Sunday, you would want to go and then leave a sip. Uh, but Brumbies, Blues, Brumbies are the best Australian team. That's not saying much. Blues are the worst New Zealand team, and that still means quite a lot. They're, if North I Korea, think, if, if I'm North not, Korea, if I'm not mistaken, if North Korea, if I'm not mistaken, Australia, yes, attack, attack yep. Canberra. Okay. The Blues and the Brumbies. Brumbies are leading their conference with 17 points. Blues are at the bottom of their conference with 17 points. But the Brumbies but are. But the Blues' points difference is 33. The Brumbies is 6. So the Blues are higher. They would be if the ladder was normal. The Blues would be higher on the ladder than the best. And Australian the Blues team. are in the bottom of, the, of New Zealand. The Brumbies are at the top of Australia. But, but the Brumbies are playing at home. And the Blues don't travel well. Brumbies will win. Henry Spate will get a double, um, and the Brumbies will win by 17. 17. Does the Dregs match the throw? Yeah, probably. Carpet. Probably. So there you go, guys. The Rugby Roundup. We just rounded up the rugby for you. What do you, what do you think about that? Let us know at the Rugby Roundup on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Even look us up on SoundCloud and iTunes, I think. Do we have any other Sosh Med? No, we don't have a Snapchat. There's too many. Too many to keep handle. Not as on the end. Yeah, but have a look. Post at us. If, you, if you've got an opinion on 2018, is it going to be a better year for rugby? Let them know. Let us know, man. You know what I mean? Uh, but apart from that, I think that's it. I think that's it, guys. What's the time? The time is that. All right, guys. Peace out. Thanks for sticking around. Stick in it. Yeah, you. Yeah. Bitches! Wait. If you're listening on YouTube, we haven't quite turned it off yet. No, we haven't finished. Do you know why? This is a little secret for you guys. Well, bounce the beat because the beat just got bounced on. Guess what's next? Motherfucking unicorn. Why? I stab. Why not? I'm a horse, of course. With four skin wrapped around this dull nut, wrapped around this hot dog. All I do is suck, 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 suck. To I record. The recording is almost over. No one's ever going to see this part. No, I reckon they will. Maybe one day. <laughs> um, if you find this part, can you hashtag end of the rugby roundup? Hashtag end of T R R U, and we've got a little prize for you. Seagull. <laughs>